Hi, welcome back Hi. to my YouTube channel. This is another episode of my YouTube series for when you need to remember. And today I have a good friend of mine. Tanya, please introduce yourself. What do you do? Who are you? Okay. Let's get to know you. Hi, my name is Tadi. Um Ulu Tadi. I'm a lawyer. I'm an entrepreneur. I run a business. <laughs> I've been running the business since I think it was COVID year. Yeah, right. COVID year. Yeah, 2020 when I was in law school and we had that long break. Um, although I've had businesses before that, but you know, that's by the way. We'll talk about exactly. That. <laughs> that's by the way. Um yeah, I work in a law firm as an associate. I majorly do labor and employment and immigration and then some corporate. Um, but yeah. So, Sally, how do we know each other? Wow. <laughs> Is it what? Like six years now? I'm no, so no, no. It's been more than that, honest. actually. Um, so, we have this friend, friendship group uh, called Radicals yeah. and... We've been friends since I think our second year, although some of us, you know, yeah, joined, joined after. So I think um, Boba was already a friend of the group. Yes. Yeah. So yeah I think you were. I started with Joe and I. Yes. Then um, Debbie and Bessie yeah. were also friends. Yeah. And then at some point, it came then together. Then came together. So and then started growing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, we're going to do that since we're in uni. That's a couple of years. It is. Beautiful, beautiful. So it today's is. episode, we're going to be talking about money. Okay. Money. <laughs> <laughs> and this is just for everything you need to remember about money in the year 2024 because money is an important part of everybody's lives yeah. and is a huge stressor as well mm -hmm. so every time or any time you feel like you're having issues with money or you're struggling or anything then this video is something that should help you out so the first question is what motivates you to make money how were your mindset about money formed Okay, I feel like before we start talking about money, it's very important that um, I put a disclaimer, you know, yeah. because I mean, I myself also feel like I'm not, you know, completely there. And I think that a lot of people, I think a lot of people, you know, might be able to relate with that. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I know I have a few things to say, but just, you know, to clear the air. <laughs> <that. laughs> because my friend is a big let's, woman. Let's just be clear. But what motivates me to make money? So I think first of all, I have this very strong belief that God wants me to make money. Mm -hmm. God okay. wants me to have money. God wants me to have resources for myself and also to help people. Mm. So first of all, I'll say that's my biggest motivation to make money. That's, you know, the person that created me wants me to have it. So which means that it's not impossible for me and I should be motivated to actually, you know, mm -hmm. doing yeah. it. You know, there was this day, there was this um this time that I think I was struggling a bit and um um my church we had a church pro um, project I wanted to do and um I really wanted to donate a certain amount of money, but I couldn't afford to do it. And I was so upset. Right. Was. I was so <laughs> upset. I was like, what? You know, I couldn't afford to. And it, it, it didn't make me feel like, um, oh, sorry, I can't. It was a real, like, push, mm. like, no, they cannot be, need, the church money. cannot have a need or at least want to do something and I'm unable to drop so and so amount, mm. you know. That just, it's also another motivation. I think I come from a family of people that are very um, entrepreneurial-minded, mm. okay. if there's a word okay. like that. So, um, and I've been watching that, you know, for as long as possible. You know, I would have times when I would ask my dad for money and, you know, he would say, ah, there's no money, yo. but like the next minute or the next day, my dad has sorted it out, <laughs> you know, and that was just, you know, ingrained in my mind that there's never actually, there's no money. Mm. Do you get, it's just, we need to look for where yeah, to find the money. The there is, you know, plans. something, arranges, da, 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 da. and I wanted to be that person mm. that even if, and that is what entrepreneurship is really about. Like, even if it looks like there's no money right now, mm. I just need to do one and two and two and three. Yeah. And, like, money can be there tomorrow. Mm. So, I would say that's my motivation, really. A lot of us, our motivation is we don't want to be hungry. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to starve. We don't want to be broke. Right. But that makes a lot of sense. 
So our second question is, how do you manage limited finances as someone who is high maintenance hmm. or as someone with expensive taste? Now, Tade is one of the most... I don't even know the words to use for her. For, but amongst my friends, my friendship <laughs> groups, the people I've known in my life, Tade is... <laughs> You know what is just oozing eliteness, like exquisiteness. Like she's just when you say what is butty, that is butty. Are you sure? That is too. That is too. That from from uni, like her room. Ah no no no. Tadi has high taste. So how do you manage, you know, your high taste the, when you desire a certain quality of life, but you're not right. at the stage where you can really afford right. it yet? Mm-hmm. How do you manage all of that? Okay, so <clears throat> I think first of all, I I have quite a number of voice of reasons right okay. so um what i mean is a lot of times when i want to maybe get something or do something i have people that i ask like do you think i need this mm. do you think i get this you know sometimes i do that sometimes but also i think over the years i've learned to calm myself down to mm. just you know relax for instance now in this wedding planning season about <laughs> to be a wife yeah in this wedding i feel like i've surprised a lot of people mm. right yeah I surprised a lot of people today said so they, they, they've had to tell me Teddy, don't worry the money is there but me i'm like mm. if i can cut here and cut yeah. here and cut there then i can get what i really want so that's really it for me it's mm. i have my priorities right priorities. and i have something yeah. that some things that i can let go of like i can just you know be like okay it's not so you know so i always draw my priorities things that are very important to me i will spend on them that's Mm. the truth but Mm. um the things that they might be important but i don't draw so much importance to it i can push them down Mm. so i might still get it but i can push it down to a better time when it's more convenient Mm. or just you know avoid it totally just like maybe telling myself okay maybe i'll do like a vow renewal 10 years from now and i can have it (laughs) you get (laughs) but a lot of time i tell myself about mission Mm. about mission Mm. about mission like even if i want it and i just realize that "Mm, it's too costly compared with the other things that i might need and you know i can probably get time twice Mm. you know with this amount i'm like okay there's no need so it's just that i have so just to recap i have voices of reason Mm -hmm. um i prioritize things as well so and she's on so it's basically herself. delayed gratification sometimes yes, yes. how does your faith influence your money habits right um so i think i i mentioned the first way when i was talking about what even motivates me in the first place you know which is um just being able to um give and all of that but um it does because one of the things that one of the hallmarks of being a christian is contentment Mm. right and i think that that is the one of the biggest ways that my faith has really influenced how or my habits to money Mm -hmm. because i know that the fact that you know everybody wants it everybody has it or the fact that it's great and i like it does not mean i need to have it you know i need to look at everything from the lens of contentment all things may be lawful but not all things are expedient so i remind myself of that you know once in a while i'm not um i'm not completely you know um where i want to be in line with that but Mm. i think that over the years it has really helped me to build better money habits you know um to stay off and this is not to say that um borrowing money it's a bad thing especially when it comes to businesses you know it may be helpful but for me it's also one of the reasons why i even want to make money in the first place Mm. you know so i don't have to be you know Mm. feeling entitled to anybody's money or looking Mm. here and there you know stuff like that and i think that people don't tie these things to faith as much as they need to Mm. but i feel like your faith should push you to even want to be in a better position where you don't have to rely on anybody Mm. you know you don't have to be sucking off anybody to survive you know you don't have to constantly be borrowing or constantly be you know doing this and doing that it will get you to that point of growth Mm. you know and literally that's when you realize that your life has started to change and you now can give to people you know so for me i would say that's one of the big things that my faith has been a very big impact to how you know i view money i've viewed money over the past few years so so recap
contentment, mm-hmm. right? Not being entitled to people's money. Those are the things that my faith has done for me. And also wanting to make, you know, my own money so that you I can, can give. give. So our next question is, how do you rest? Like, how do you balance between rest and the right race of always trying to make money? Especially in Lagos, where everybody's hustling, 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 mm-hmm. hustling. Okay? Mm-hmm. Like, how do you rest? Well, okay, that's that's a good question. Um, let me see, how do I rest? So I, I've had times when it's actually been too much for me, like mm. to focus on this and focus on that. So my means of resting over time has been delegation, right? right so right. Um, I realized early on when I actually started the business that I did not want to have to do certain things myself because it would make me get tired i didn't want to manage my social media account myself but i wanted to oversee it you know and i think that this is a big lesson for a lot of people like a lot of people feel like oh i don't i'm not a social media person oh i want to you know run a social media but i'm not sure many person so i can't do it then delegate it mm. um i know you, you might think about the cost and all of that right but this is not to say you should use people without pain i think it's very important to you know but Mm, there are people around you that want that opportunity Mm. to probably learn social media management they're just you know growing in that so you can both grow together Mm. you understand be willing to offer some benefits even if it's money be willing to do that that's of course not everybody sometimes it's important for you to really you know learn the ropes yourself Mm -hmm. but and and i had that experience already before so it was one of the things that made it easy for me to even make that decision but that's my means of resting that i don't have to look at everything myself because it can be very very overwhelming it can be very overwhelming i've delegated at some point I, i've had you know someone manage my social media where i do the dms i do all of the other things the um, preparing the orders sending out the orders discussing with delivery men which is the most stressful I part of the like, oh, business you know and so i just good. the delegation has it has been going from i've i started small and over time it has increased now i just send it out to a career company you get and i don't even do it myself i have somebody that you know does that so that is how i rest really because i also like, like i said i'm a lawyer as well so i have my law firm work that i have to i get paid to do so i have to focus on as well um but i found rest in that and then when i want to unwind i watch a movie watch a tv show i don't really like watching movies but i watch a tv show and it really helps me to just you know rest, rest and just you know recalibrate so yeah mm-hmm. that would be okay. it. delegation mm-hmm. for context Teddy has been running business since his uni i remember when you used to sell wigs yeah I and was, i even had a wig laundry exactly. thing that i was doing there was that i remember when snails I was going to say that, so I remember there was an Instagram account for yeah, a farm. Yeah, yeah. I Daddy had a snail has farm. in so yeah. many, you know, yeah. businesses here and there. And if she, if she says something, then you should believe that she has enough experience, yeah. you know, for what she says. Now, she does skincare. I'm going to link her skincare, you know, channel, yeah. her, her Instagram page, right? Yeah, yeah. In yeah, the, yeah. In the yeah. description, in case you're looking for skincare, you can consult, you can buy. Ivy skin. Ivy skin got you, you know. How would you encourage people to treat money in terms of like savings, investment, giving, especially people that are just starting and don't have a lot? Okay. Um, now, if you're just starting and don't have a lot, one of my advice would be get family like if you have an idea for instance get family and friends to invest and be willing to put in the work to make sure you get them get their money back to them you know that's one of the fastest and surest well not sure it's sure but at least it's that's if you have family and friends that can help you of course you must have an idea of course you must have that because not everybody that everybody wants to invest in, mm-hmm. you know, if you've not made yourself, if you've not represented yourself in a way that, you know, you seem worth the investment, you won't really get people to want to, you know, invest. So you have to build yourself, you know, first as well to get that level of commitment from people. Um, I mean, I have friends that invest, you know, in RiseVest and things like that. I mean, I've tried. But I guess it's not my thing at the moment. Why? Because I I know another way of multiplying my money. So mm. instead of putting money rise first, I'll think, oh, if I put some of the money in Ivy Skin, 
I will get this amount. I need to pay telling me ten percent interest. It's not. Let me just put my money in this. But I won't lie. This season has made it a bit hard. You know, with the yeah. dollar and all of that. It just feels like she should not just put my money in dollars and then, <laughs> you know. But but you know, there's still that drive to you know continue that. Um. So yeah, you can invest and you can save as well. But I. I, I'm not against saving and I think saving is great, but I don't see the multiplication effects in it. Saving mm. is great for rainy days, but it's also great to save if you actually have so for instance now with my business, um I have a I have a business partner, mm. he's um dormant, but he always says every time he sees money in the account, he's like, Tell you what's his money doing here? Mm. You know, like we could, you know, put it out and then get more money. So, you know, for for I think for myself that I run a business, saving doesn't really feel like fun. It doesn't feel mm. like worth it because i might as well just put that money out there and yes. get more money yeah. um we never really want to see money in the accounts like that um but i like i like to see it just for seeing sake um but saving is great especially for rainy days um mm. but when you say when you talk about multiplication it's not it because some and this is how i see it some events would come and, then, and it would take my savings but if the money was not there mm. the events would not be able to take my savings it's probably a wrong way to look at it but that's how i see it sometimes it actually um, makes sense. so yeah okay. i think that would that would just be my advice you can if you don't have friends and family you know or you just look to other investment platforms after doing your thorough research you know as well and also build yourself you know to be worth somebody Thanks. committing money or oh, yeah, you can also save towards the idea or something that you want to, mm. you know, do. And so what you were speaking, something came to mind. Sometimes it might not even be like a business idea. Sometimes it, you are the brand. Yeah, yeah. And so that's true. Um, if you want people to invest in you, say help you pay for a course or get you a new gadget so true. or something, just be able to show that you can also provide value. So value is not only cash yeah it is you know eventually it will become cash because yeah. cash is our means of exchange yeah. but sometimes yeah. it's, it's more yeah. than that so you know, your skills yourself sometimes you mm-hmm. are the brand mm-hmm. and all of that how do you handle financial pressure and comparison you might have touched on this a bit before mm-hmm. but like you know how you open instagram yeah and somebody has a new wig yeah. somebody's traveling to yeah. this place that's what he's getting yeah. iphone 16 before yeah. it comes out <laughs> how do you manage that okay so um i take note of it mm. right like i take note of things that i like that i see people you know use um but i also remind myself that if i cannot afford it now there's no need to you know get it if i want it or something i like then i can just take note of it for future sake or i send it to my fiance you know is that too <laughs> good i beg <laughs> good, that I too. Beg. um but i won't say the pressure like i've had times when i've gone to, oh my god i really want to travel like i want to go somewhere with my babe but that my babes but that's where it ends do you get that's where it ends if i cannot afford it and then it just becomes like a bookmark you know Mm. or you know i just highlight it for the future um so i think that comparison is the comparison is a thief of joy i I know it said a lot and it's actually the truth so those that compare themselves with other people you know you're really well except except so the good way to handle comparison is just to work harder Mm. right is to work harder especially for me when i see something that i like i realize that okay well i need to work harder to you know be that or be there it is not bad to want better i think there's this sermon that one of my pastors preached about isp um basically increasing your your isp and mm. your just what does isp stand for? um ah, i'm trying to remember it's like os but um but like the human version yes but like the human version just increasing your mind towards what it is that like god would have you have like greater things don't limit yourself do you get don't limit yourself even if you're not there now you know it's good to look at it and want it and work towards it or pray and pray towards it you know as well so yeah um i see them i like them i save them i look forward to doing it as well but it doesn't make me feel like oh i'm not there i'm not there i'm not there the the sooner you learn that the sooner you become your joy remains or you remain happy because if you continue to compare if you there there will be new things every day there will be new things every single day Mm -hmm. you know you just have to you know i i think for the longest time in my life and this is to be honest i feel like for the longest time in my early years i used to compare myself with Mm. people a lot i used to compare myself with people a lot um 
but what it led to was um unhealthy competition mm. and not a proper growth like not a proper growth strategy a proper growth strategy would be to know what you want not yeah. even just based on what other people are doing to know what you want to count the cost of getting what you want and then work towards it not count the cost of getting towards what somebody okay. else you oh, know yeah. wants it's it's pointless really what you're talking something came to mind is floating away <laughs> well like i want to bring it back oh yeah how um, it's important for people to motivate you instead of you know the yeah. objects of your comparison yeah so like that thing that she said is so important you know how many things i've saved like yeah. oh i like exactly. this i saved this i like this i saved this exactly. and then you know as it applies to me i now start to you know work towards yeah. it and stuff yeah so yeah so our next question is what is the best money habit you have ever picked up uh um this was recently okay um and i think that i, I would advise a lot of people to do it for their business I mean, if you're not currently doing it, um, and I would call it a money habit, which is not having access to my business account. <laughs> what some people do was well, it's two ways actually. One was not having access to my business account. Two is not spending the money. But I realized that having access to the business account was making me spend the money. When not having access to it, I didn't, I didn't spend it. And then the second thing is to do a monthly account check. Mm. So I have um, an accountant that every month we send him the account statement mm -hmm. and so he does a breakdown of our expenses a breakdown of our income he does the percentage net profit and mm -hmm. gross profit he does the comparison month on month he would show what brought the increase in funds like if mm -hmm. the money increased and i mean over time i could watch you know the growth trajectory of the business you know the what was working it was helping me to know what was working positively yeah. was it ads was it this you know do we spend more on ads here should we reduce it is the ads money equivalent like is it matching up with what's the profits we're getting yeah. and what we're getting delivery money down to even the bank charges mm. does it make sense you know quite a number of things and i think it's a money habit that has helped me and also seen because I didn't have it for a lot of a long time in my business until recently, and also just seeing how much the business is making, you know, every month it's a motivation on its own, yeah. you know, to do more the next month. Mm. It's a motivation on its own to do better at what you're doing good, mm. you know. It's 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 been changing, like life changing mentally as well, you know, mentally and and for the business, it's it's changed my mindset. Like it's made me see, wow, if this business is doing this now. Mm -hmm how much more can we do in if we're doing this if we just yeah. add this if we just tweak this i I'm, I'm trying to see how you know you can apply it to even in a situation where you don't have a business, a business you get because yeah. you know it might not be so i mean if you're just making and i would go to what my fiance does mm. god bless him please <laughs> share. so share. uh my baby's a mathematician mm. right although that's not what he's doing now but he has he can tell you how much he has spent on fuel in the past five years. Like he has a sheet that has everything. I mean, now he doesn't spend money on fuel again, but <laughs> <laughs> he can tell you how much he has spent on fuel in the last five years. What and what and what took all of his money, mm. you know, or any of mm. his money. So he has a sheet exactly. He has a sheet that tells him his total income for the year. Mm. Like if as as it's coming in, mm -hmm. which is increasing, he will have already noted what he ex because um. He's doing this based off on his nine to five, mm. right? So he already writes his expected, like, you know, net profit, right? And I mean, if any additional thing comes in, it would be recorded as well, but in a separate sheet. So this one is really just for. Maybe I'm sorry that I'm giving out your secrets. <laughs> <Give me laughs> your Please help our lives. So, you know, down to like, you know, money spent on relationship, like mm. dates, like gifts is there down to money spent on food this so that that is there so it's the, exactly and this helps you to plan ahead mm. it helps because he has there's a budget and there's actuals yeah you get so if he spends more than the actuals it's been noted but it also helps him to plan ahead like oh this money is going here so it means that i cannot use this money there you, and i think it's such i mean it's not something that i can't i might be able to do but i think it's such 
a brilliant yeah. idea if you're able to do that. It's just an Excel sheet. Just take note of the things that need yeah. to be there Something and just in, yeah, it's remarkable. I can see that's probably one of the reasons I fell in love with him. Oh. <laughs> it's really remarkable. Oh, that's <laughs> That's amazing. So yeah. basically, if I to kind of summarize, if it's possible to have, and this doesn't just apply to your business, right? Yeah. To yeah. your personal finances, if you can have somewhere where you lock away some money and you can't spend it, yeah. that's good. Yeah. You know, being intentional about monitoring money that comes in, money that goes out, and then like you did for your business, basically looking at the things you spent money most on, yeah. you know, and their profitability. Is this something you want to keep doing? Yeah, exactly. Did you overspend on, you know, buying yeah. food outside? Exactly. Do you want to cook more? Those type of things. Yeah. And just generally being intentional. I feel like a lot of times in our 20s, because because maybe we because we're not earning as much as we would like the little things we earn we just spend it and yeah. we're like until then until then yeah. but i guess it's the habit we build now yeah. you know that will translate into when more finances come and oh, it will, it will exactly. be less overwhelming exactly. when the big money comes because exactly. you build a habit now yeah. so that makes sense and you will we'll reach out to him to <laughs> No, no for real. <laughs> I think he's the real master. Yeah. Of this. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it so much. Yeah. What advice will you give young entrepreneurs, especially those seeking multiple streams of income? Okay. Um. So I think the first thing I would say is, um, it's important to first of all build you know the one that you have mm. you know okay. it's important to first of all build the one that you have because it is the lessons from that that can help the rest be successful um i'm not scared of failure but you know i'd rather not have multiple failed businesses at once because then your yeah. management your resources everything you're trying to keep it will be going to so many different places that mm. before you know it you know you are a bankrupt person <laughs> <laughs> you know um so i would i would say but you know there are some times that it could be one is like a goods and goods business the other one is a service business mm-hmm. you know those ones might not necessarily need you to like you know balance out like that because the other one just needs your service um for instance say i have a pra- private practice you know um none of my money is directly going into that so it's something that i can easily do with i just need my time sorry it's something i can easily do with you know the other ones and i would really say that it's advisable to do that especially and it was something i had to do when i stopped spending my business money Mm. you know i knew that okay if i'm not spending your business money do you mean on yourself yeah on myself Ah. (laughs) but then how do you now get yeah so how do i get profit like how do you how do you i mean you have a business so you can have money yeah that's what i thought too in the beginning i fought it so badly like i was like i don't understand the point of the business so i can survive do you get like it's not but i'm like not really because if i keep doing that then i'm not i won't let the business grow Mm. you know i won't let the business grow um and i it's it's common it's common that people say you know you can spend your income on yourself and then put the money back so is it not the same um is it the same capital i'm going to keep using for the mm, business you know forever it, it doesn't add up really so let me put it in this way i have one million capital and from that one million capital i make like five hundred thousand. um so is it one million i'm going to pull back mm. again which means that like the only capital yeah. i'm making is another let's say 500 so and i'll get to now i have one million income so is it still that one million that i'll still keep putting like it won't yeah. really there'll be no growth per yeah. se you so, get so increase. you know yeah and you just it, it will get to a point you know where and it's not that you cannot i can't spend totally but most of the money if i take it i have to refund it mm-hmm. you know but at least it's good to know that if i ever do need like you know safety funds or whatever um there's a place where i can there's a place for backup you know but i just refund back to the business so yeah because of that i obviously felt the need to have another stream of income since i'm letting go of this you know stream of income um which is why i now try to venture into like you know private practice that could also bring some money aside my you know regular nine to five because this country wants to you know you know what's up (laughs) I think that multiple streams of income are good, but just, you know, count the cost, really. Mm-hmm. Just count the cost. You don't want to build a house without counting the cost. Um, um, and like I said initially, just 
be if you're doing two good business i think it's it's important that you allow yourself to establish you know one a bit a bit better before you go into the other one but yeah i think but i think multiple streams only come out something that people should really really and it's something i learned from my parents like early on you know they don't and i think that's why my my parents were always kind of like able to you know provide nonetheless because there's somewhere there's somewhere we can pick up something from yeah. you know even if it's and truly even if it's from the capital right we know that when this other one makes profits i can because okay let's say the profit is going back to me i can put it back there you get and so you find that you you're never lacking yeah. per se because everything is somehow somehow balancing, balancing each other out. yeah out yeah, so, yeah. god give us wisdom amen to do all these things so what would you like people to remember from this episode okay um i think it would be do not be afraid to fail Mm. I know this is very cliche, like a lot of people say it. Um, but I mean the Bible says that out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, the yeah. thing is established. So I want to establish that in your mind. Do not be afraid to fail. I've had two failed businesses. Um, mm. like she said, I started a hair business, you know, a couple of years ago. Um, but for many reasons I decided to stop. I think one of the major reasons was that I did not find the quality that I was willing to sell. Mm. um because i don't and I, I i don't know about other people but for me when i when i don't trust you know something i'm selling right um and i try i tried to find others but you know it just got to a point where i was like Mm-mm, this isn't it and to be honest it was that failure that pushed me to even start you know ivy skin like mm. ivy skin was supposed to be ivy hair mm. it was supposed to be like a re was because like i'm coming back hotter and god just like slapped me i was like you know what girl <laughs> you know you're gonna sell makeup <laughs> and funny thing i I'd sold makeup before i did hair but it was like very low skill when low we're in key, school yeah, yeah very yeah. yeah very low key um and then you know it, it just just came and you just went from ivy hair to, uh, to ivy skin and at the time i started ivy skin i wasn't selling skincare if you remember yeah, correctly for yeah for many reasons it was just makeup and then over time we grow but um i used failure so failure shouldn't be something that scares you i think failure should be a strength Mm. failure should strengthen you to want to win yeah. you know it should strengthen you to want to go again like failure should be one of your biggest strengths really like if i failed this year i mean if i failed this year that means that i have no reason to fail next year i've, mm. I've failed already Do you get i failed already i have no reason to fail again so if there's mm. one thing i would like people to just you know establish because I've, I've heard a lot of people say many reasons why they don't want to start something or do something and yeah it, it just all looks like fear to me you know fear of failure um to me like oh I, I don't know how to do this oh i can't do this oh it's not my thing it's not my platform it's not my that you know mm-hmm. i mean people that are doing it don't have two heads you know that's my first words god and if they didn't start they wouldn't have yeah. gotten there like so don't be afraid to start don't be afraid like things can change in an instance you know Incredible. things can change i was literally talking about a business you know one minute and next minute i didn't even know you know when you know, god sent another thing and it just became became it you know even as even at what i'm doing now like i know that like there would still be more that god would have me do, do you yeah. know and i must be prepared and ready to like it must not be a, oh i'm i'm still even trying to build this one you know i want me to do i'm not saying do everything that comes to your mind oh no no please you know i'm not saying do everything that comes to your mind but you know be prepared to count the cost and be prepared to start if you know once you receive that go ahead from god that you know this is it um be like be like david that before he wanted to take any step it's another i think it's another point as well mm-hmm. before he wanted to take any step he asked god god should i go if i yeah. go will i win this battle yeah if i go will i you know be that person ask god about every single thing like yeah. that is the only way that you would make like proper progress nobody starts a thing without god and really really ends well you know let god be your foundation and be sure that like once god is your foundation you have that confidence yeah, that, that confidence that it would you know so yeah I, I think that would be it don't be afraid to start let fear let fear let the fear of failure be your no let failure be your strength you know really um and ca- count your cost talk to god first talk to god first 
first and always yeah thank you so can we say a quick prayer for our viewers yeah am i the one praying yes please okay, okay. part us with your anointing <laughs> Lord, we thank you for a day such as this. Thank you, we thank you for a time such as this where people come together to know more about the things of this world but in your lens. Mm. Lord, we pray that this message of Christ spreads you know, far and wide to the whole wild world in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that people come to understand money the way you would have them in the name of Jesus. Amen. There is contentment in the hearts of many in the name of Amen. Jesus. We build, we use our resources to build the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray for anyone that is watching this today that desires to, you know, just have something, do something, make some more money. I pray for you that that idea, that direction will come from the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. And you will start and you will do and you will be successful in the name of Jesus. Amen. And you will be a blessing to many people in the name of Jesus. Amen. We also pray for our host. We pray that you, God will continue to multiply you Amen. in this work that you are doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Even in your finances as well, as you have sat, you've thought to even bring this message to people you would also receive in the name of jesus Amen. a double fold in the name of jesus Amen. thank you father thank we you worship Lord. your holy name because you are good mm -hmm. in jesus name we pray Amen. 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 thank you this was so i actually really enjoyed doing this yeah, you know and i learned a lot i feel like that's the word of god sometimes like it's yeah, the way yeah, yeah. So, yeah. 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 so thank you guys so much for watching yeah. and listening you know whatever platform you use please leave comments like share subscribe you know the drill and if you have any more questions especially for our guests you can yeah. let us know in the comment section and we'll do our best to and just to, if you need skincare or makeup products yes so she has a plug -in. <laughs> please reach out to her she will give you great deals for yeah. great thank products you so much stuff. Yeah. thank you so bye thank you <laughs>